Okay, so here we're going to quickly go through the first part of the week one homework, which is media management. So what do we mean by media management? When you look at a project in Premiere Pro, you see that, you know, you, you organize your media into bins, right? So you will, you'll, you'll drop your media in, you know, and you might have bins inside of bins like this, like your, this picture area right here. Let me zoom in on that. So the, you'll have, uh, uh, you know, picture here, B-roll, um, stills, and what I'm calling my hero shot. So there's the, the notion of dropping in, um, you know, bins all of your content and organizing it that way. The important thing to understand is that when you compare it to what's on your computer hard drive, you see that your content is, you know, can be all over the place. It's not necessarily, there's no direct mapping between your bins over here and your content, which is over here. So how do you manage this? Uh, you know, the practice that I've gotten into is using a scaffold or a, a project scaffold or a way, basically a template of folders that I can use to keep myself organized. Inside of this project scaffold, you see all of these folders. Each individual folder has its purpose. For instance, a one original footage is really suitable for your, um, your, your raw footage, footage that you have shot or that your crew has shot for you. Two would be your project files. This would be any project files in Premiere, Adobe Audition, um, After Effects, or whatever other post-production software you're using, those project files can go here. Under graphic sources, you have the idea of still images, logos, line art, vector graphics, other things of that nature. Usually original might be something that you, uh, that a if it's a client job, it could be the client's logo, you know, those sorts of things. This folder is called intermediate exports because I've, and, and this has changed, this used to be a different name, but I've n renamed it to intermediate exports because it's a place for kind of those, those uh, parts of the project where you are at a, at a point where you need to transition from one tool to another. That might be sending your, your, um, your, your finished cut from Premiere over to, say, get color done color work done on it. It could be, uh, you know, you've done post-production work in After Effects and you're ready to re-import that into Premiere and you're not necessarily wanting to use the dynamic link functionality, which we will talk about at another time. This folder is called Audio Sources because that's where you put your production audio. This can also be sound effects, other other uh, sound sources that you've created, generally speaking. In this folder, we have stock footage, which is generally uh, footage that you've paid for or you've licensed. So this would be a licensed song, licensed video or animation or something else that you have gone out to someone else and licensed to use. In most cases, when you, if you hire a composer to do um, a, a, a custom composition for you, you're actually licensing it, believe it or not. You're not, you don't own that copyright unless you specifically set up a contract to transfer that copyright to you from the composer. Keep that in mind. Uh, that does come up in, uh, in certain circumstances. But generally speaking, if you're paying somebody to uh, to get content from them um, that it is it would fall under stock footage. The second to last folder is exported files. This is where you would imagine you would put your final output. Um, importantly, some projects you will find might have multiple export and multiple final outputs. 
Um, think ep episodic web uh, series or something along those lines. Or a series of ads could also be a typical sort of way that you would work through a uh, um, a set of 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 footage and content, but you're you're basically targeting multiple outputs. So you you this might not just be one file in here; it might be several. And finally, you have production paperwork, and this is where you're going to put all of your your paperwork for this production, um, and I, I know that makes it sound obvious, but this would be things on the order of model releases, um, scripts, shooting uh, schedules, call sheets, you know, every piece of, and, and you know that productions generate a lot of paper. But for editorial, this might be camera logs, this might be um, director, you know, AD reports and stuff of that nature, um, so that it's for editors to be able to use. Now, if you're a producer and you're doing the whole thing yourself, this would have everything in it. So, when you have all of these folders, what are you going to do? Well, in this case, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit copy these eight items. I'm going to go back to this folder that has everything in it, and uh, we'll just paste them in. We'll paste these eight items in. Now, with that in mind, what would you normally think that you would uh, drop your footage in? You would probably drop your footage in like this, where you've got your raw footage. You would recognize it as your raw footage, and you would drop that into raw footage. A 3D close-up, this looks like a still image. Yeah, that's a still image, so we'll put that under graphic sources. Um, this music is licensed, but so generally speaking, it could go under audio sources. I would probably end up putting it under stock footage. Understood what just happened there is when you when you drag and um, hold it over a particular folder in Win, uh, in Mac, I believe this also does it in Windows, it will open that folder up for you. And so when you drop it, it will drop it into graphic sources up there. Here's a couple of project files. AEP is the After Effects project, and of course, PR Proj is per, uh, Premiere Pro. So we'll put those under project files. We will have uh, this pan overlay. This actually, and this file of uh, oddly enough is actually a um, a sidecar file that uh, Premiere often will create. Sometimes it's created by Audition, but it is a um, uh, it's literally just a, a graphic of the of the the audio track of the this video file so that it can quickly put it up on screen for you to see what the waveform looks like we'll, we'll talk about that um, in the audition unit anyhow this looks like an intermediate export to me because that looks like that was the output of the um, after effects and then finally Sonoma Ant Wars, uh, bringing that in, and um, this, I believe, was uh, provided by the client. So I'll put that under stock footage, and okay, we're done. So that's one approach to doing this. It is not the, you know, there's some of these that are subject to some interpretation. You could develop this further where you realize that um, this is a date code, and you see that, that there's two dates being in here. You could reasonably create a new folder for um, maybe you did them by reels or by days so you could do uh, day one and uh, day two and you could put the day one files the, the ones with the date code 419 under day one and then all of the ones with the date code 420 hey, hey 420 to day two and then you'd have kind of a, so the the top level folders are kind of you know numbered and named for a reason but that doesn't necessarily mean you cannot actually do subfolders to your preference it is probably appropriate to do that especially if you're generating a lot of footage you will work through um, a lot of you'll probably be adding a lot of subfolders in this okay well that is the that's it for this I mean this is not that particularly challenging task but if you can um, adopt this practice or at least this discipline in 
managing your media on disk as well as in your projects so that both of them are tidy. They don't have to be identical, but at least they're tidy. That would actually be, um, it, it's going to help you in all of your future projects.